The United Kingdom's Natural Resources Reserves got a recent serious boost that is bound to help it cope with a serious problem. That problem is its depleting natural resources of value, such as gas and oil, among others, and not to mention its weakening exports. The new resource, which will add as much as $130 billion to the country's economy over the next 50 years, is technically unknown to most Britons. And more interestingly, the giant mine being built to extract the mineral is almost invisible. In fact, even if you drove right by it, you still won't see the Mega Mines ground facilities because they have been designed to be almost entirely 50 meters or more below ground. From one look at the mine, and all you will see are large farming barns. What is this mystery resource? Why is it so valuable? And what are the technologies used to build what is considered Europe's deepest mine? The mystery resource is polyhalite, which, to be frank, is something that we never heard of before. And interestingly, the only country in the world that has found colossal amounts of it is the UK. In fact, the UK is the only country mining polyhalite. In simple words, it is a fertilizer that does not need to be chemically treated after mining and is perhaps one of the very few known solutions for the world's high-value crop nutrition problems. It is of such great quality, using it can give the farmers the ability to advertise their crops as organic. You are probably thinking, is it potash? The answer is no, despite the similarities. Polyhalite is a naturally occurring mineral that contains potassium, sulfur, magnesium, and calcium, plus numerous micronutrients. It is an extremely ideal natural fertilizer. The company Anglo-American, which is constructing the mine, simply crushes and granulates polyhalite to produce their brand name fertilizer, Poly4, which is also low carbon. In a nutshell, Poly4 is the opposite of the, generally speaking, harmful traditional chemical fertilizers and costs the same, and is also known for its additional benefits for the soil itself. The mine is located near Whitby in North Yorkshire, England. It is called the Woodsmith Mine, after the two geologists who discovered it. Initially, the project was owned by York Potash LTD, which later became a subsidiary of Sirius Minerals. However, this company's financial trouble eventually led the mine to become owned by the firm Anglo-American in 2020. The polyhalite deposit is located between 1,500 and 1,600 meters deep. The seam is about 70 meters thick and covers an area about 62,000 acres. Believe it or not, this layer of polyhalite was formed nearly 260 million years ago after a sea that was covering the area retreated. In 2027, the mine will begin exporting millions of tons per year to countries around the world. The amount is predicted to grow to as much as 20 million tons per year by 2030. This mine is actually located in North York Moors National Park, which means nature preservation and even the landscape view could not be interrupted. So, the Woodsmith Mine is literally invisible, and more intriguingly, the mineral is transported to the Materials Handling Facility in Wilton, which is part of the Teesside area, around the River Tees, about 37 kilometers away, via a tunnel that is 360 meters below ground and features a conveyor belt, dubbed the longest in the world. From there, the ready product is once again transported on a conveyor belt inside a pipe to the Tees Port, which connects Northeast England to the rest of the world. The mine's ground facilities are nothing but cute-looking large farm barns surrounded by a forest in the middle of a gorgeous park. There will be no trucks coming and going, no concrete slabs or structures, no tall steel skeleton towers, no massive warehouses. In fact, you won't even see the hoists or winders. Let's now tackle the construction and engineering marvels used to build this impressive, super sustainable, one-of-a-kind mine. Let's start with the service shaft. It is designed to give the workers access to the mine's pit nearly 1,600 meters below the ground. To keep it hidden, it is enclosed in a massive barn. Inside, a 60 meters deep and 30 meters wide shaft was established using a method called diaphragm. The walls of this shaft are lined with steel-reinforced concrete walls. This shaft hosts a 45-meter-tall winding tower for lowering and lifting workers, materials, and equipment, but not the mineral, which will be lifted via a second similar shaft located in a second adjacent similar building. From there, a 1,600 meters deep shaft was sunk using a shaft boring road header, which is a technology that was developed from the mechanized sinking of shafts. The machine's cutting head rotates in a star pattern, digging about 20 centimeters with every pass, which means it is quite effective and fast. 
As the shaft goes deeper, its walls are lined with either steel or reinforced concrete, depending on the type of geology. Once completed, the winder or hoist above will be used to lower and lift a multi-deck elevator or cage for moving personnel and equipment to the mine's pit. This shaft is also connected via a tunnel at a depth of 360 meters to the mineral extraction shaft and the 37 kilometer long mineral transport tunnel. The same thing was done to construct the mineral extraction shaft nearby in another massive barn. However, the type of winder is different since it is designed to lift the extracted mineral from 1600 meters deep to the mineral transport tunnel. The mineral seam will be mined via a combination of blasting, cutting, and drilling. Then the mineral will be moved to the extraction shaft on a flexible conveyor belt where it is lifted to the mineral transport system, which is a unique machine that automatically empties the hoisted mineral into the conveyor belt inside the transport tunnel where it is transported to the Milton Materials Handling Facility in Teesside near Teesport. As a result of extraction, eventually, the mine's pit will become a colossal network of mine roads spanning an area of nearly 2,500 square kilometers. As we said before, the mineral transport system consists of a 37-kilometer long concrete-lined tunnel containing a conveyor belt, which transports the polyhalite ore from Woodsmith Mine to the Milton Mineral Handling Facility. This tunnel is the longest in England and quite deep below ground. It is about 5 meters in diameter with 20 centimeters thick concrete walls. It alone is estimated to cost $3.6 billion. The first tunnel boring machine, or TBM, commenced operations in 2019. In total, three TBMs were used to excavate the tunnel. Each TBM weighs 2,000 tons and progresses at an average rate of 20 meters per day. The TBM that commenced work from the Woodsmith Mine was lowered via a specialty construction shaft to 360 meters below the ground to begin operations. Each TBM is 205 meters long and consists of several sections behind the drilling head. For example, a section is dedicated to perimeter jacks that press on walls to give the machine grip as it drills while moving forward. Another section hosts a platform on rails called lagging equipment or buck up where other pieces of work equipment are located, such as fans, transformers, and a belt to remove the material being excavated. Every few meters, the machine pauses as prefabricated concrete segments called voussoirs, which are made in a concrete factory on the surface, arrive and are fed into the machine, which installs them and thus creates a solid concrete lined tunnel. Once completed, the tunnel will feed the Wilton Materials Handling Facility with the mined polyhalite mineral via a conveyor system. The Wilton facility does not involve the use of chemicals to process the polyhalite ore because, as we mentioned earlier, this magical material only needs to be crushed and granulated to become the Poly4 product, which is a final ready for use. Another reason for this is the mineral's 88% purity level. From there, the final product is transported via a conveyor belt inside a 44-kilometer pipe to the Teesport for storage at the Redcar Bulk Terminal, which will feed bulk transport ships. A project's purpose-built port called Brand Sands that can accept large bulk cargo ships is also being constructed to meet the expected high demand. Thank you for watching and please share, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments section.